All right, we are continuing the revision uh, session for writing questions and I have uh, kept this as a learning outcome for today's uh, session or the session that is uh, apply Newton's second law to solve numerical problems. But then we'll see some simple questions and then move ahead to solve specifically about second law because you need to identify the state of the object first before applying second law. All right, so simple a question I have just taken one of these that is an ant climbs at a steady speed up the side of its ant hill which is inclined 30 degrees from the vertical state a free body diagram for that now when you read such questions highlight or be uh, attentive about certain terminologies or the key terms here it says vertical the angle is 30 degrees and also at a steady speed okay so for equilibrium or for an object to be in equilibrium the words or the key terms would be so you need to first step is to identify if the object is in equilibrium or not so some of the key terms that represents an object to be in equilibrium is this steady speed i'll come to that in a bit so if the object is at rest meaning it's not moving or it is stationary all these words represent that the object is stationary or the object is in equilibrium right the second state of equilibrium would be constant speed or steady speed so steady or constant speed all these represent the object in equilibrium so what do you mean by equilibrium it is when the forces acting on the object are balanced okay so the forces are balanced so what do you mean by balanced if you have a force acting to the right by 50 newton then there should be a force acting in the opposite direction that is 50 Newton. So here horizontally or in the X direction, X direction or horizontal direction, the forces are balanced. So the object is in equilibrium in this state. Right? Now if you have another force acting upwards with say 40 Newton, then there should be a downward force as 40 Newton again stating the object is in equilibrium. So if the object is in equilibrium then follows two states of conditions which is one it could be at rest or it's not moving second it could be at constant or steady speed this relates to what Newton's first law so this is Newton's first law right so this question is about drawing a free body diagram for that so why i explained all this is that you have to keep it in mind when you're sketching a diagram or when you're drawing a free body uh, diagram for a specific case you need to first think whether the forces are balanced should we keep the arrow heads or the length of the arrows equal or should it be unequal so all this will come from this point whether it's in equilibrium or not all right now here see the key word is steady speed it says steady speed so definitely the object is in equilibrium now let's sketch the diagram i'll move this question okay mm -hmm. So if you take the end as a dot, okay, now you have, it's going up a hill, so, and it's and hill, and they say it's 30 degrees from the vertical, okay, you should remember horizontal is this direction, vertical is this direction, so to the vertical meaning, to this, it makes 30 degrees, right, usually in normal cases, they give to the horizontal if they give horizontal that means they represent or they are indicating this 
angle but here it says to the vertical all right now here there is no numericals involved there is no calculation you only have to draw a free body diagram okay so any free body diagram if you place the dot immediately without even considering anything else you can just draw the force of gravity which will always be vertically downwards so these kind of questions the will it will you will definitely have one or two questions you will score one mark for labeling this it's a very simple straightforward so don't lose this mark if you have a free body diagram to be drawn place the dot to represent the object immediately draw the force of gravity fg vertically down not at any direction it doesn't matter whether it's kept on an inclined plane or it rests in any different orientation but you will have the uh, direction of the force always by the gravity acting vertically down means straight down you will draw fg like this always so that's drawn now let's see what are the other forces in this particular situation that's acting on the object now if it is at inclined plane the second force again which is always there if the object is in contact with the surface which is the name itself is there contact if the object is in contact with the surface you will have the normal contact force that is acting perpendicular to the surface so which is fm okay so since this is an inclined plane the force of contact force a normal force acts at 90 degrees to the surface so you will be drawing like this if it was on a flat surface like this then you will have the normal contact force up acting straight so keep this in mind you will have the normal contact force changing the orientation based on the surface okay it has to make 90 degrees to the surface here the surface is like this so it makes 90 degrees it's vertically up here the surface is slanting so or inclined you have the force acting this way okay so pause the video understand grasp it so this is applicable to the inclined plane situation it's a basic one you can score easily two marks for this if a question related to inclined plane appears whether to calculate or to do some numerical questions or it is just to draw a free body diagram okay now it is moving at steady speed so definitely there is a forward force that is acting upwards so the ant is pushing itself up so you have the forward thrust or the forward force acting on the object and since it is it's at steady speed you will also have a opposing force force of friction so this you can label it as applied force this has friction so by the side or below you can write what each one stands for fg is force of gravity and fn is normal contact force normal contact force and fa is applied force or force applied you can write ff or to be specific in this case the ant is moving so you can write kinetic friction also so it is friction force okay so friction force can be two types that i'll do it in a separate uh, another session static and uh, kinetic so for this first question what did we see we just drew a free body diagram so if you have a free body diagram for drawing an object that's moving with constant speed steady speed or even if it is at rest you may have all these forces balanced and you will show <coughs> only the forces not the components only the forces acting on the object all right so this is for free body diagram for an object that's in equilibrium 
okay so the forces might slightly vary based on the situation for this particular case this is the answer